72 virgins in the Islamic paradise? Hello, and welcome to another video from Christian Table Talk. It may sound like a very bad joke, but the founder of the Islamic faith claimed in clear language that Muslims will get virgins in paradise. We will confirm a number of things that Islamic apologists often try to deny. Number one, Muslims get virgins in paradise according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Number two, although the number of 72 is not that relevant, there are hadiths that mention it. And number three, these virgins have little purpose other than to provide for the sexual needs that men in Islamic paradise will apparently have. First, let's make it clear that getting virgins in paradise doesn't just apply to martyrs during jihad. Although this group speaks mostly about it, this does not mean that this same reward does not apply to other Muslims. You get from us the sources that make it clear without any doubt that Allah promises Muslims virgins with whom they will have sexual intercourse in paradise. You just have to come up with something like that as the founder of a new empire looking for men who want to die for his purposes. Because unlike ordinary Muslims, martyrs go directly into this remarkably earthly described paradise. Virgins in paradise according to the Quran. Let's start with Surah 55 verse 46 and 56. Surah 55 verse 46 and 56 read, but for him who feareth the standing before his Lord, there are two gardens. There will be maidens restraining their glances untouched beforehand by man or jinn. The verse shows that in the Islamic paradise, there will be given several chaste wives to each man. These women are very clearly presented as a reward for the believer. It also shows that these women have remained virgins for their own assigned husbands. That virginity is also evident from the following passage. Surah 56, verses 34 through 37. Verily, we have created them maidens of special creation. So we have made them virgins, loving and of equal age. Ibn Kathir wrote in his tafsir, his exegesis, of this passage that the prophet in Jamiat Termini was asked if there will be sexual intercourse in heaven. His answer, according to Ibn Kathir, was yes, he will have the strength to have sexual intercourse with a hundred virgins in one day. A similar hadith from the same collection can be found later in the video. Ibn Kathir also writes about the tradition in At-Tamri that Muhammad had said that these Khoris become virgins again and again after every sexual intercourse. However, this has been removed in the English translations of both Tafsir Ibn Kathir and Jami Ar-Tamri because they probably do not want us to know about it. You can now see on the screen the part that talks about this. There are also Quranic verses that emphasize how aphrodisiac the appearance of these versions will be. Surah 78 verses 31 through 33, for example, speak about this. Surely the state of triumph awaits the God-fearing, gardens and grapevines, full-breasted mature maidens of equal age. This is apparently an important aspect according to Allah, a God who promises his followers full-breasted women in heaven. It is almost unthinkable, and that is why Muslims do everything they can to deny this information. When you look up this verse, you will find many translations, such as companions, who are the same age, where the whole word full-breasted simply is omitted. But Quranic translations of Muslims like Halali Khan, full-breasted maidens, and Pikthal, voluptuous women, are more honest. It simply states that these are women with a specific sensual physical characteristic, as you can now see on the screen. So don't be fooled by Muslim apologists who want to deny that it's about full-breasted women. To be sure, we quote the tafsir, the exegesis, of the world-famous Ibn Kathir regarding this verse. Kawaib Atrab, meaning wide-eyed maidens with fully developed breasts, Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, and others have said, Kawaib, this means round breast. 
They meant by this that the breast of these girls will be fully rounded and not sagging because they will be virgins, equal in age. This means that they will only have one age. Tafsir al-Jalalain is another Quranic commentary that confirms the same. In Books of Maidens, Kawaib is the plural of Kaib. Of equal age, Atrab is the plural of Trub. The following surahs also point out the physical beauty of these women and the fact that they will be wives of the believing men. We will later show that Jesus labeled this teaching as an error. Surah 52, verse 19 through 20. Eat and drink with healthy enjoyment as a reward for what you have done. The God-fearing shall be reclining on couches facing each other, and we shall wed them to the maidens with large, beautiful eyes. Surah 56, verses 11 through 12 and verses 22 through 23. Those are the ones brought near to Allah in the gardens of bliss. And there shall be wide-eyed maidens like unto preserved pearls. In Surah 38, verse 52. And beside them will be chaste women restraining their glances, companions of equal age. Virgins in Paradise According to the Sunnah Also in the Sunnah, virgins are promised to both martyrs and ordinary Muslims. Here is a selection of the, according to Muslims, authentic traditions. Jami'at Termidi, Book 38, Hadith 2536 reads, Anas narrated that the Prophet said, The believer shall be given in Paradise such and such strength in intercourse. It was said, O Messenger of Allah, and he will be able to do that? He said, he will be given the strength of a hundred. With this hadith, Muhammad made it very clear. There will be sexual intercourse in paradise. There will apparently be so much sex in the Islamic paradise that Allah must give the believers the strength of a hundred men to be able to sustain all of this. In the next hadith, you will find one of the reasons why this is necessary where the concept of 72 virgins is discussed. Jamiat Termidi, Book 22, Hadith number 1663, narrated, al Mokdam bin Mahdi Krub, that the Messenger of Allah said, There are six things with Allah for the martyr. He is forgiven for the first flow of blood he suffers. He is shown his place in paradise. He is protected from punishment in the grave secured from the greatest terror. The crown of dignity is placed upon his head, and his gems are better than the world and what is in it. He is married to seventy-two wives along al Horain of paradise, and he may intercede for seventy of his close relatives. The Hadith makes it clear that after his jihad, the martyr is married to no less than seventy-two virgins, Horis, in paradise. We saw in the Hadith before that Allah will ensure that these men get enough strength to share the paradise bed with them. For jihadists, this fact will greatly reduce the fear of dying during jihad. That must have been the thought of Muhammad when he sought soldiers for his Islamic state in the Middle Ages. By the way, we will find a Hadith further down the road that mentions the number of 72 women in the context of all believers, not just the martyrs. Before we go further, we will share another hadith that speaks about jihadists and the horis they will get. Sahih Bukhari, Book 55, Hadith number 544, narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's apostle said, The first group of people who will enter paradise will be glittered like the full moon, and those who will follow them will glitter like the most brilliant star in the sky. They will not urinate, relieve nature, spit, or have any nasal secretions. Their combs will be out of gold, and their sweat will smell like musk. The alawoods will be used in their centers. Their wives will be horis. All of them will look alike and will resemble their father, Adam, in stature, 60 cubits tall. The following hadith adds an extra dimension to the darkness found in the Islamic paradise. Sinan ibn Majah, Book 9, Hadith number 2014. 
It was narrated from Mudad bin Jabal that the messenger of Allah said, No woman annoys her husband, but his wife among Khoris of paradise says, Do not annoy him. May Allah destroy you, for he is just a temporary guest with you, and soon he will leave you and join us. With the Hadith, this shows that according to Islam, there is a large amount of jealousy and hatred in the Islamic paradise. However, these are the things that are completely unthinkable in the heaven of God. Yet we read that the problems of polygamy on earth also occur in the Islamic paradise. The expectation is apparently that people will spend their time in eternity in a place where entities exist that have a sickly jealousy and envy towards others. Does this sound like heaven or more like hell? Since the Islamic paradise will be a beautiful place according to Muslims, the unthinkable must be true. Muslims who take these resources seriously apparently enjoy women who are jealous, hateful, and envious and experience this as a beautiful gift from God. Some men may feel more like men because of things like that. I mean, who's to say? Obviously, Muhammad told his people what they wanted to hear. However, we suspect and hope that most Muslims will reject this idea. In the next hadith, we read that Muslim women, according to Muhammad, are cursed by angels when they refuse sex with their husbands. Sahih Bukhari, 7237, Book 59, Hadith number 48. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, if a husband calls his wife to his bed, i.e. to have sexual relations, and she refuses and causes him to sleep in anger, the angels will curse her till morning. But now it turns out that even the Horis, who are waiting for her husband in paradise, curse her at the slightest. What a bizarre prospect for the Muslim woman, that she has to keep her husband happy in bed here, and as a reward for this, she will soon have to share her husband with many more women who already approach her quite hatefully. It is painful to see how Muslims believe that these sickly characteristics which characterize the earth so much and from which we hope to be redeemed in the heaven of God will continue in paradise. According to the Bible, there is no sin in heaven and it is a place where those who are unpure shameful and treacherous cannot come as we can read in revelation chapter 21 verse 27 it reads but there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie but only those who are written in the lamb's book of life the difference between islamic and christian heaven could hardly be greater a genital that never goes limp but it could be worse. The Islamic sources even offer details about the genitals of both the Khoris, the virgins, and the Muslim men in heaven. In Sunan ibn Majah, Book 37, Hadith number 4337, we read the following. It was narrated from Abu Umama that the messenger said, There is no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to 72 wives two from the Horis, and seventy from his inheritance from the people of hell, all of whom will have desirable front passages, and he will have a male member that never becomes flaccid, i.e. soft and limp. Although this hadith has a classification of weak or daif, according to the scholars, this does not mean that it is absolutely untrue especially since most of the elements in this hadith are confirmed in quite a few stronger hadiths, which only increase reliability. In fact, the popular Muslim scholar, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, says that the chance that a daif or weak hadith is being said by Muhammad is far greater than the chance of him not saying it. Let's listen to Hamza Yusuf. There's, there's an attack on weak hadiths in our time. Weak, weak, a weak hadith is, is anywhere from a B minus to a D minus. All right? A Hassan hadith is, is a B to an A minus. 
and then a sahih hadith. I'm just using so a language you can understand. An A minus is like a, 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 a sahih hadith is from an A to an A plus to 100%. Mutawatir is 100%. Al-Bukhari is like 98%, 99%. Muslim and Bukhari, 99%. Uh, sahih Muslim, 97%. So the, the, uh, a weak hadith is not thrown out. Just like a professor doesn't throw out a paper that, that gets a D minus. It didn't flunk. It passed. And so when the ulama say it's a weak hadith, it passed. In other words, it's something that cannot be proven to not have been said by the Prophet. The, the probability that he said it is, is far greater than the probability that he didn't say it. So it's called a hadith da'if because it, it's, it, the, the margin of error is greater than in a Hassan or a Sahih. So how did the ulama deal with that? The ulama dealt with it by saying that for fadail al-amal, those actions that are virtuous, uh, you could do use a weak hadith if it was a virtuous action and it didn't relate to a hukum. In aqidah, the opinion of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi is the hadith has to be mutawatir. That you can't, that's why a hadith like the Nur al Muhammadi, which is an Ahad hadith, uh, is not used in Aqidah. Or the hadith that Tu'arad alayya amalukum, or Amalu ummati in Al Bazar, which is a Sahih hadith. So the ulama don't reject weak hadith. They don't. As you have heard, weak hadiths do not disappear into the trash can but are not used for rules that require absolute certainty. The dubious content of this hadith can therefore not be described as untrue and can be used as a pleasant prospect in paradise for a Muslim. All these weak hadiths are not for nothing displayed in the countless collections that the Sunni commentary has guarded for more than 12 centuries. In any case, this hadith makes it clear that there are quite sick expectations of paradise written down in the oldest sources that Islam has to offer. It is actually said here that the so-called last prophet of God has taken the time to explain to his followers around the campfire how you are going to have sexual intercourse with women in heaven. If our Lord Jesus Christ had been here, he would certainly rebuke Muhammad for his portrayal of God's kingdom as a heavenly brothel where you can't get enough of the many female beauties available to you as a man. For example, Jesus rebuked the Sadducees when they merely claim that you were married to your earthly wife in heaven, as we can read in Matthew chapter 22, verses 29 through 30. It reads, Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. The people will be like the angels, and that does not include sexual intercourse. The idea that God provides an eternal erection for men in heaven is absurd. You can clearly see the difference here between the warlord who only makes things up when it suits him and Jesus Christ who speaks with authority because he already knows heaven itself. Inhabitants of hell are sent to paradise. We have shown that the last hadith we shared talks about, one, that Muslims in paradise will have eternal erections, and two, that Muslims in paradise will have 72 wives. But as if that wasn't bad enough, this hadith also says that 70 of these 72 women are women who will be taken away from the people of hell, i.e. from pagan Jewish and Christian husbands who have gone to hell, and that these women will enter paradise to provide for the sexual lust of the Muslim men. Can you imagine a heaven that allows some kind of slave trade to immigrate from hell? What does such a thing say about such a heaven? Let me make one thing very clear. We are not making these videos to ridicule Muslim or point a punishing finger at them. The vast majority of Muslims probably don't even know that these sources exist. Our message to Muslims is therefore one of concern. 
The hope is that Muslims will come to realize that this cannot be heaven, that the true God has reserved for us and in which we all hope to enter one day. Muslims, the question is, what kind of place does the search for Islamic heaven really lead to? Think about that. This was the end of the video. We hope that has been of some use to you. Thanks for watching and God bless. Thank you.